Our first lecture for today would be the introduction to engineering mechanics. So, before anything else, we would like to have the lectures in Newtonian mechanics, which would be, would be part of the introduction as well. So, first, let us define physics. Physics is a science that relates the properties of matter and energy, excluding biological and chemical effects. Now, under physics, we have this mechanics, and it is the branch of physics that considers the action of forces on bodies or fluids. So in civil engineering, Mechanics is basically the foundation in most of our specialization. So, as it is defined, it deals with the actions of forces on several types of bodies or fluids. So, as civil engineer, we have uh, dealt with forces acting on construction materials like steel, concrete, uh, timber, and also, we have also studied the forces acting on fluids when we are doing water resource engineering. And as well as forces acting on the soils, soil which we use in geotechnical engineering. So basically, mechanics is the basics of all our subjects or speci specialization in civil engineering. So under mechanics, we have to define two terms which are statics and dynamics. So when we are analyzing forces on body or fluid at rest, that is statics. And when the body is already in motion, that would fall under dynamics. The subject would be dealing solely for statics of rigid bodies. So just to give you an idea, Sir Isaac Newton is a celebrated scientist or physicist which has published the mathematical principles of natural philosophy. So without a doubt, this work ranks among the most influential scientific books ever published. So according to Newton, there are three laws of motion. The first one is if a particle is at rest or moving with a constant velocity in a straight line, it will remain at rest or continue to move with a constant velocity in a straight line unless acted upon by a force. So I could say that a body at rest would definitely not move. Otherwise, there's an external force applied to it. But it was stated here that A body that has constant velocity is also defined at rest. It's because acceleration causes motion in an object or change in motion in an object. So if a force is being applied to an object, it would definitely move to the direction of the orientation of the force. So if an object is pushed to the right definitely it would it will move to the right so this is the first law of motion so the object would not move otherwise you push it or you apply a force to it a good example for uh, something with a constant velocity so we can say that the earth is moving but we can't really feel the acceleration that's why anything here on Earth is actually having or actually has a velocity. But since the acceleration is quite uh, unappreciated, 
therefore we consider it at rest. Otherwise, it was applied with a certain load, then a body would change its velocity. Or from zero velocity, it would definitely have a velocity after a force is applied to it, then therefore it will have an acceleration. The second law of Newton says that a particle acted upon by a force will accelerate in the direction of the force and the magnitude of the acceleration is proportional to the magnitude of the force and inversely proportional to the mass of the particle. So it is related to the first law of motion that the object will move or accelerate to the direction of the force and the magnitude of acceleration is proportion, proportional to the magnitude of the force. Therefore, if a bigger force is applied to a particular object, it would have a bigger acceleration. So if you apply a smaller force on that same object, definitely it would have a lesser acceleration. That's why it says uh, that the acceleration is proportional to the magnitude of force. And it is inversely proportional to the mass of the particle. So it's defined by the equation F is equals to MA, which we will be discussing later on. So you can appreciate more the second law of Newton. And the third law would be for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That is the forces of interaction between two particles are equal in magnitude and oppositely directed along the same line of action. So if I try to push something, then that object also exerts an opposite force to me. No? Likewise, if you kick a ball, the ball is exerting a certain force on your toe, which is acting uh, opposite to the direction of your kick. Now, if I try to push a chair, the chair is also exerting a force that is opposite to the direction of my push. So that is the Newton's third law. So let's differentiate mass, force, and weight. So for our mass, we have kilogram and slag. So kilogram for the uh, SI unit and slag for the US customary unit. Okay, so whereas force is defined by Newton and pounds, also weight is a form of force that is defined by Newton or pounds. So the difference between mass and weight is that a force, uh, when it acts to a certain particle with a mass m, uh, then it causes the object to accelerate according to Newton's second law. Therefore, the force is different from mass because if a mass is applied with an acceleration, then that's the only time it could be called a force. Similarly, where A, I'm sorry here, where A is the acceleration vector of the particle. So the units for force, as you can see, is the unit for mass and acceleration is a unit of length over the square of time. Okay, so now the unit for force is mass times the length over time squared. Now let's have a sample unit analysis for force. Therefore, the mass is has a unit unit of kilogram. And if you multiply the mass times acceleration, the force has a unit equal to, for SI, we have kilogram meters per second squared. And that is equal to, that is equal to 1 newton, okay? Now, the unit for mass is kilogram and the unit for force is newton. Now remember that the Newton is composed of a mass unit and an acceleration unit. Whereas the mass unit is simply the mass unit alone 
and it does not have an acceleration unit. Now, weight is a uh, is the force of gravitation acting on a body. So, weight is a form of force. Okay? Because when you multiply the mass of an object to the gravitational pull, you will have a weight. For example, you have a mass here on Earth and your acceleration due to gravity causes you to have a certain value of weight. So if you try to see everything falls back to Earth, it's because of the acceleration due to gravity. We accelerate towards the Earth. Now if you try to jump, you come back to the ground, it's because of the acceleration due to gravity and that gives us our weight. So if you're in the outer space where the gravitational effect is almost negligible, you will still have mass but you would definitely not have any weight because the press uh, there's no presence of acceleration due to gravity. So if you are on a separate planet which has higher gravity, then you would have higher value of weight. If you have a smaller gravity, then you would be definitely lighter on that planet. Okay. Give, uh, given that you have a constant mass, of course. So on Earth, the gravity is equals to, or the acceleration due to gravity, is equals to 9.81 meters per second squared. And let's have the law of universal gravitation. It says here that two particles with mass A and mass B that are separated by a distance R, as shown in the figure. The law of gravitation states that two particles are attracted to each other by forces of magnitude F that act along the line connecting the particles. So if there are two massive objects, M A and M B, there's a force that attracts them. And that force is defined by the equation shown here. Wherein M A is the mass of object A, M B is the mass of object B, and R is the distance between the center of mass of two objects, and G is the gravitational constant equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 cubic meter per kilogram per second squared. And this concludes our introduction to the subject and to the basics of Newtonian mechanics. Thank you.